Hello, everybody. This is a Lamley Showcase. We have arrived at the final category for the 2022 Lamley Awards. It is now your chance to vote on the model that you think is the best and most disappointing premium licensed new model from Hot Wheels. This is my favorite category for a million reasons, including the fact that uh, of all that I have in my collection, Hot Wheels Premium, in particular car culture, is my favorite element to collect. It is the my absolute favorite. I just love the diversity of everything that comes out. I even like the extensions of like the Team Transport and the diorama sets and the Target 2-packs. I like some of the cars, a lot of what's come from Fast and Furious. I just like Hot Wheels' approach to premium of late. I just adore car culture, and it's always fun to do a kind of a year in review with the new castings that were released. So that is what we're doing today. Uh, all licensed new models. You're going to vote on the model that you thought was the best and the one that disappointed you the most. I think that's the first time I've uh, introduced that to the category. First off, though, a couple of models that are not going to be considered. Um, they are based on real cars, but I just left them out for a specific reason. I felt like they would skew the voting. There will be a lot of people that because they don't have much of a connection and based on how these cars have hung on the pegs, I'm leaving them out. You'll see why. It's not like I'm leaving out an actual licensed car I don't think you'll like. But it starts with this one. This is the EcoJet in the, from, uh, what was it, Entertainment. It was an extension of the uh, Leno's Garage line that was done for car culture. The EcoJet exists, but it was an experimental one-off um, done with in conjunction with Jay Leno. It's not based on a real car. If it were like an EcoJet, like if it was a car based on like, I don't know if it was just a souped up version of a Corvette or something, it's going in for sure. But just because this is kind of built from scratch, it has some Cadillac vibes to it. Um, but ultimately, I like it, but I just get a sense that people will vote for this as most disappointing. And I just want to see what uh, what might what else might go in there. So I'm going to put this right here. The other one you probably can guess then because it's also hanging on the pegs. It's also Jay Leno, and it's also based on a real car, but also a one-off, not totally based on anything. And you might, someone might say, oh, it's pieces of this and this and this. I get it, but I hopefully you get what I'm saying. If you wanted to vote for this is the best, uh, put it in the comments, but I'm not putting it in the polls be just, just because I think we want to vote on the cars that uh, you know are based on real things. Even, even one-offs like Liberty Walk and stuff, those are one-offs, but they're based on actual cars, right? All right, let's get to it. We'll start from the beginning. I'm going to go based on release. I'm a little bit, I'm probably off a little bit, but it's in general. There were no new models in the first mix of car culture, so the first time we saw new premium castings was in Deutschland Design and Car Culture, I believe. I think that was the first one we saw. So we start with this one. This is the Mercedes-Benz 2012 C63 AMG Coupe Black Series. Long name, cool car. Um, done in two colors. I'll show you both colors on the turntable. You can see that obviously there was the first version in red, but something new this year that we'll talk about were the chases that were released. And in every case, except for the first mix uh, with the Corvette, the C8 Corvette, uh, the chase car in car culture, the black chase car was done um, in, uh, was a new casting, right? Including this one, the C63 Black Series. Mark Jones does most of these designs. Um, there's the red one. Here is the, uh, here's the, the, I'm going to try and get through these very quickly. Here is the chase in black. You're not necessarily voting on the chase, right? You're just voting on the casting. That's what I want you to vote on, but I'm going to show you everything from these cars that was released. Some of them were in separate lines. If there were multiples, um, others were together like the chases. We had several cases uh, of that happening, right? With, uh, with these new models being a chase. Here's another one from Deutschland design. We had, uh, two new castings technically kind of three. Another very long name. This is the Mercedes-Benz AMG C-Class Racer, but we also know it's like the DTM Touring Car, is what they called it. This one got a fantastic deco. Cool to see cars like this being done. We're seeing more and more of them. They have really excellent silhouettes, is something I like, and I know that's a big key for uh, Hot Wheels designers, is how they look in the package. This is one that definitely has that, and it's super, super detailed by Mark Jones. He, he likes these kind of cars, too. All right, we got to speed this up. Here we go. Another new model that was, uh, I'll show you the, the version that uh, I think is most significant. It wasn't a technically a new model in Deutschland design. It is the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter. Um, the Sprinter van, it's a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter Tourer is the official name. This is the, this is the car culture version from Deutschland design that they put in there. 
Um, as you can tell, there's a lot of real estate on the side. And anytime you see a big, heavy premium casting with a lot of real estate, a lot of room for art, you will see where you're going to see this probably pop up numerous, numerous times. And that's in pop culture. I think this is technically its first release is the Wonder Woman. Um, I think that's Wonder Woman. Yeah, it was either a DC or a Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman series from pop culture. And I think we're going to see that more and more. Maybe we'll see. I really like that they did a Sprinter van. I think it's appropriate. It's a very significant car, especially during COVID when everyone was buying them. Um, we'll go from very big to very small. This is probably the smallest premium model. This is from Boulevard. Um, almost forgotten. I was like, almost for, had to remember. It's a 67 Austin Mini pickup. We've seen the Austin Mini van. This is the pickup, which was kind of a unique, and they lowered it, put the small rims on it, the four spokes, put it in British Racing Green. Um, but this is a you know very unique, tiny premium casting and hit the Boulevard uh, series. Seems like forever ago. All right. This is undoubtedly a significant model. I don't think I'm giving anything away by saying that this is, I know, will be in the running um, at, from a new casting, may even win it. It just has been a juggernaut since the minute it was it was unveiled. This is the Liberty Walk. Well, the official name is the LBE R34 Super Silhouette Nissan Skyline. It is an R34 Sky, Skyline made up by Liberty Walk. It's a real car to uh, as an homage to these super silhouettes from the uh, early to mid 80s uh, that raced in Japan. That was on the R30 base, right? And um, and this is just in the red and black. That's the that's that uh, that Tomica look, you know, from that era. The the sponsorship that Tomica did on these cars. Liberty Walk did this. It was a fantastic model. Um, it's a really nicely well built model. We've seen it in diecast before, but Hot Wheels did it super detailed, and it's just been a red hot hit. And then add to the fact that it was also the Chase, and this car looks so cool in black, in jet black. All the Chases are black this year. I think that's continuing into 2023. Um, there might be some details like this uh, red roll cage in this, but an all black version. And then we even had a third version in uh, Team Transport, the modal version. Uh, that is really cool. Kind of the same kind of red and black coloring, but obviously a little bit different. Uh, this car will be white in, I think, the first mix of Boulevard coming up very, very soon. So we're seeing a lot of that casting. Also in that Mountain Drifters mix, we had this new casting. It is the Toyota Celica. We actually had two versions of this one. This is the 1995 Toyota Celica GT4. Mountain Drifters in yellow, very cool stock, clean version in yellow with the chrome rims. And then we get a second version just recently in the diorama set in also a stock red with the 10 spokes, which looks really nice. Um, so two very nice versions of the Celica released at the same time. That Maybe that's your favorite. Remember, you're voting on the casting. We'll park it on the lawn over here. Um, really, really nice casting. I mean, it just gets better and better and better. Um, harder and harder is probably the better term trying to figure out which model is the best. This one came from entertainment. It is the cyberpunk Porsche, but more specifically, cause we're going to see this show up in, uh, like outside of entertainment. I'm sure it's just set for car culture very soon. Porsche 930, um, take away all the cyberpunk deco and you can see what we're looking at here. We're looking at a 911 turbo. And uh, obviously the 930. And if you just put it in stock deco, you can see what this has the potential of being. It looks really cool in the Cyberpunk deco, but judge that, judge this casting based on what it can be later. I mean, and that's pretty significant. It's We've seen a lot of Porsches, but we haven't seen this specific style, this specific silhouette. And it's going to be really exciting to watch that develop um, and see where it goes in premium. Moving on, we had another pop culture. So technically, did we have two pop culture releases this year, uh, new castings? It would be the Sprinter van and then this, the Ford Transit. Is this the Connect? 09? I think it's the 09 Custom Ford Transit Connect. This actually has put on the turntable for a minute, but uh, we'll pop back and I'll show you. If you have seen this on the pegs, because it has been on the pegs, you can see this little notch here. Well, it took me forever to do it, but I was able to do it. You can actually remove the top and show the uh, the inside of this thing. Boy, that took me forever to do. Um, and then you just piece it back together by feeding that through and then just snapping it back. But all right, that took forever to do it. But through the power of editing, you don't know that. All right, um, moving on. BMW diorama. We, see two, we saw two new castings 
introduced in the diorama sets, which are exclusive to Walmart. Um, this was the first one. It is the BMW M5. Actual name, official name is 2001 BMW M5 E39, done in the M red, dark blue, and light blue deco that we're so familiar with. Obviously, with the M2 and the M3. Really, really cool set. Very popular set. And Phil Reelman actually designed this one, not Mark Jones. He may have done a couple of others for premium, but I know he did this one for sure. And uh, uh, obvious, uh, obvious fave. No, uh, no surprise there uh, being introduced in the diorama set. All right, as we keep going, some Mark Jones favorites, including this one. There, you'll see several of these pop up. You know, European race cars, uh, rally style, you, you name it. We're seeing a lot of European race cars from Group B. Um, all kinds of stuff. And this one is the Alfa Romeo 155 V6 Ti. Racing car, really, really clean. Just a really kind of heavy stance, which looks cool. Um, we've seen this racing deco before. I think Matchbox did this model way back when. Uh, but this is a nice, really crisp Mark Jones um, take on the... Not even a take. It's just a really nice replica of this particular race car. Nice Alfa Romeo. That was in Boulevard, as was this. We talked about this when we did the Best of Hot Wheels video. This is the Holden Monero. What's the year on this one? 73 Holden Monero. Muscle car out of Australia that uh, has been very difficult to find in Australia. We definitely had to put it in the Best of, but it's also a new casting that you could vote on today. And uh, Australian collectors, let's hear from you. You like this one? Put it in there. Let's see how it uh, how it goes up against these other premium new models, the Holden Monero. All right, here's one. Super, like, all kinds of details on this one. We've gotten a lot of Lamborghinis. In fact, we're going to do a little run of Lamborghinis for a second here um, with the uh, Leno car as well. But this is the Lamborghini Ascenza SCV12. They put looks like Spectre Flame paint on this because I think in the in the actual car that you see uh, you see them putting on the track it is in this color. So it's cool to see Hot Wheels utilizing the Spectre Flame in a realistic way, not just as like a chase model or an RLC. And maybe they don't consider this green Spectre Flame, but I I have to think they dipped into that can of paint right to make this thing. Um, the car is incredible and the detailing is insane. Metal spoiler on this one, and of course. Like many other new castings this year, including the Liberty Walk and the Mercedes, it was the Chase in the Exotics Envy set. So here is the Chase right here. Away goes the green. Away goes a lot of the details, and it just goes jet black, and the numbers turn red. And other than that, they left all the other paint details that they put on the green one out. So really clean this one up um, in that perspective. And uh, that was a very clean, very mean-looking jet black uh, Lamborghini. All right, continue to move on into the Leno set. We had a couple new castings there as well. Now, of course, we had the tank car. We're not considering that one, but we had two new castings. In fact, I'll just, uh, well, I'll just go with the uh, Lamborghini Countach now because we had this one in red. We've seen this as a police car. I, I wonder if it's the same, um, the same files were used for the, uh, well, before it got to this one, right? Um, Brendan's files for the Countach that he did. Um, there's a lot of things similar. There's a lot of differences as well, but they're essentially the same with that flat nose. Oh, well, I mean, you see, it's a Countach. It's got that flat nose. This one does not have a spoiler to replicate Jay Leno's. I actually like it without the spoiler. I think it looks cooler and cleaner, a little more retro. So we had this red version, and then of course, because it was a new model, and we had two Lamborghini chases in a row, the Countach turned black as the chase there. So um, same kind of thing, like it already was clean in the red version, but they changed up the wheels here, which is interesting. So they do some, like they turn, turn the cars black and then they'll do something kind of different about them. And not, uh, not in every case, but in this case they did, uh, changing the wheels totally black instead of doing the, um, those Watanabe rims that they did on the, on the red version. All right. Another one from Leno, the Corvair. This is the 1966 Chevrolet Corvair Yanko Stinger. Totally replicated. It's cool to see the Corvair. This thing is super clean. Obviously, it's made up to look like Leno's car. Um, but I love how they did the small wheels on this one. I like how it's stanced. Um, just a really cool one. This white color really shows it off, I think. How cool this is. This is really clean. Leno or not, love it. Just love this car. Um, and that might be the one that you want to put in there. It adds, it adds like a, you know, a unique muscle kind of... Um, 
vibe to it. And I'm looking here, you know, it's like tons of European cars, uh, quite a few Japanese cars. The one muscle car is the Holden Monero, and then you have the Corvair. And I'm just looking. I'm not seeing much in terms of American muscle this year. That just was the theme. We might see more pop up later, but not a ton of American cars and car culture this year. I have to go back and compare. We've seen a lot. It's it's very Japanese and Euro heavy these days. Um, how about this? The Pantera. Keeping on that. Uh, keeping on that vibe of uh, of European cars. This is the Di Tommaso Pantera Gruppo Four. We've had tribute cars to this right the la fasta but now mark jones actually took on the actual car and we made an, a replica of the di tomaso we saw another one in in rlc um, another di tomaso here the pantera goes into premium has that uh, cool vintage sports car vibe which just looks fantastic um, that was in that uh what uh second to last mix of boulevard that came out it's been kind of hard to find that was a side after one. So has this one been in a major way. This is the Mercedes-Benz AMG E36 Estate Custom. A Mercedes wagon in black. I mean, it gets doesn't get more signature than that. This one has a very cool, just mean, heavy. Heavy is the wrong word, but just like a mean, wide stance. I don't know why I say the word heavy, but it just kind of comes to mind when I see this. Cars don't want to be heavy, right? But uh, just it's, I don't know. It's just a description that seems to work for a car like that. So that Mercedes-Benz, I have a feeling that one will be um, up there on people's votes. It's the best. Maybe it's their most disappointing because of the door lines on that one. We've talked about it. The door lines were kind of missed. And whether they come back or whether they uh, redo this casting with the door lines, I'll bring it back or not. You know, they they stopped right down there in the middle. Maybe that's why people might call it the most disappointing. See, you want to see that as opposed to I just don't like the tank card. That's why I keep those out. That's a good explanation. But I'm not saying to vote for it. I'm just saying that could be a reasoning. All right. Another Mark Jones style. The Rover. Sending a lot of the British collectors into uh, into much excitement. It's hung a little bit here, which is too bad. I hope people kind of appreciate this car. It's a 70 Rover P6 Group 2. Um, I've seen pictures of the actual car. It's like a souped up Rover, right, for racing. If you look up at a, if you look a standard Rover, it's a pretty, pretty standard looking, looking boring car from the era, you know, from the seventies, uh, looks like just a junker, but, um, you know, one of those cars that in the movies would drive off a cliff and roll down. Um, but this one's really cool. And I like how Mark Jones sported it up. He took all those cues from the cars that we've seen. I've seen the pictures online and then he's even added some elements to, uh, further to kind of hot wheels it out a little bit. Speaking of hot wheels out, many of you were unhappy that this was not included in the best of Hot Wheels 16 car poll that we did. And I get it. This was one of the toughest omissions because I really thought, in my view, it was one of the coolest uh, Hot Wheels. I'm trying to keep my opinions out of this. But this Volvo from Autostross, uh, just recently released mix, not only is it just the styling, no bumpers, right? Uh, super, super slammed. I really like the chrome rims and this color. And the casting itself is just super, super cool. It's a 73 Volvo 142 GL. Um, I I just love it. And I I had to go, the cars I put in there, I went on collector buzz. And then as soon as I put it in there, there was a lot of people, where is that Volvo? And I'm like, yeah, maybe it should have been in there. There's always going to be those that are just left out that I wish were in there. Maybe they're, Maybe I should have put it in. But I think, you know, I, I like I said, I go with collector buzz. But I think in terms of unique, cars and unique designs and unique executions this one definitely deserves to be in there and definitely deserves consideration not only is that one cool but the chase is just awesome as well going all black and sitting on the black rims just super slammed it totally changes the look too it already looks crazy uh in that uh green color and then this black one is just awesome as well so put those together just really really cool castings all right, almost to the end. I knew this would be a longer video because there's just so many cool cars to talk about. And we're right at the end where we've been loaded up. A lot of stuff hitting all at once here right in the, during the holidays, which is crazy. Uh, Team Transport, right? This one debuted in Team Transport. This is the uh, Metro 6 or 6R4, right? MG Metro 6R4 is the official name. Um, it doesn't usually get the MG moniker. It doesn't get talked about as an MG too much, but it is the Metro 6R4. And... Um, you know, another unique rally car that uh, that is cool to see being made. I think surprised a lot of people. 
forced a lot of us to go look it up. Uh, many of you who are vintage racing fans know exactly what this car is um, and uh, and appreciate the fact that it is now in the premium line. And we'll probably see other versions and other racing versions, other homages to uh, to other racing decos and liveries on that, which I'm excited about. So maybe that's the car, especially as unique choice. There's a lot of them in this. As is this, Sentra S-E-R, right? Nissan Sentra, 90, 1991 Nissan Sentra S-E-R. It is the other, like the M5, debuted in the premium uh, diorama set. Just, just out. I barely found it myself. Um, and uh, and this thing, I mentioned in the best of when I put it in there, a little surprised that a, that a Sentra was being made as the Hot Wheels, and then you realize what this car actually is. And the kind of following, kind of cult following that it has among a lot of collectors, including good old Jimmy Liu over at the Hot Wheels design team uh, and marketing. He uh, he loves this car, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if his hand was a little heavy in getting it done. But it's, uh, it's a really cool and unique car as well to have in there. All right, we're right at the end here. Ronin Run was just released. This is the new casting from it. Uh, did the showcase on this just recently uh, when Wheel Collector sent me the set. This is the RX-7, Mazda RX-7 FC Pandem. It's got the Pandem kit on it. Uh, really cool look on this one with the smaller rims. Very, very, like the Liberty Walk, you know, modified classic Japanese car. And uh, and really takes that vibe uh, to a really, to another level. And this thing is based on an actual car as well. Deco, wheels, color, everything uh, is based on the Pandem RX-7 that's out there. The FC, of course. This uh, This is cool. Um, and you know, it's, it's not in a lot of people's hands at this point. It will be as it's hitting stores right now and you can buy it, um, at wheel collectors or AJ toys or other hobby dealers. Um, they're starting to get it too, but it needs to be in there because it is a 2022 release and it's just out. And of course it's the chase as well. So it goes from white to black wheels go from kind of that copper color or that brown color to black with the copper rims on it, or the lips on it. It looks cool that way as the chase all right that's right up to it now we're going to move into the future a little bit i uh, debated whether i needed to put these in but i'm like i want to be complete on 2022 because it's imminent that this is going to be out in the next month or so and let's move forward with 2023 as a matter of fact we already have our first 2023 new casting that we'll uh, we'll move forward with already out before the final of 2022 from the fast and furious that's the porsche cayman so look for that next year but this is not out, but I wanted to put it in here. From Drag Strip Demons, this is the final new casting. I'll try and uh, give it to you. In fact, see, it's so new that even Hot Wheels sent me this so I could show it. Um, it still has the FEP coating on it. This is the 33 Willys. I'll even show you the base so you can see it. Um, gasser, right? Done in this kind of matte. I don't even know what you'd call it. The dog's angry. Um kind of this rust patina style, right? I don't even know what you would call that color on the wheels and on the body, but done up super, super detailed. doesn't look like anything else in car culture this year, right? But done as in a gasser style, and it's nice to see that patina, which we haven't seen in premium too much, um, seeing Hot Wheels take on doing a patina. I think they've done a decent job on this gasser, and because it is the new model, it is also the chase. So it goes, uh, everything's the same, Except the base color, right? Goes from uh, that kind of yellowish, whitish color, kind of aged white, maybe you'd call it, to black. And the rust stays the same on the top, on the sides, and everything else. And uh, and so there you have that. that you have. And then they went uh, black base, right? So chrome base, on, uh, chrome base on the regular one, black base on the chase to make it look a little different. It's got the, uh, got the little parachute element in the back. Um, really cool to see this one. I know that, uh, it's not in anyone's hands or maybe very few people's hands, but I wanted to show it to you as much as I can here. I'll just show you the base again, show you the top, everything else, every angle I can. So you can judge it because this might be your choice because it's a very, very cool casting and very different than everything else that's, uh, that's out here. But there it is. Cool retrospective, right? There's a ton of cool stuff that came out in 2022 in Hot Wheels Premium. I always look forward to the variety. We definitely got it this case. Go to lamleygroup.com and vote. Which was the best? Which was the most disappointing? I think uh, I think there's candidates for all of those topics. I will unveil mine when I do the uh, re uh, award show here just after the first of the year. Should be fun. Thanks, everybody. Bye.